Monday Matinee, your weekly series of live plays, classic drama and comedy, and a variety of audio drama from the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. and all and hi there i'm jack ward your pod ships pilot here on the sonic society where we visit new worlds with audio drama from around the world along with my co-pilot david alt good evening everyone please place your tray tables up and your seats in an upright position so i th- take it we're taking a long distance trip today jack tonight we have the great opportunity to visit one of the sunniest locations in the world the past the past well not any past you're familiar with but certainly my past one of my favorite books growing up was the land of oz by l frank Baum. it was also a favorite of my mother's and that's why she gave me the book Aaron Tolman of the awesome Chronicles of Oz has brought these wonderful memories back for me in their season two opening episode of the marvelous land of Oz and without further ado It all begins right here on the Sonic Society. Well, if this is my favorite wicked witch... You have no right to that throne! It doesn't seem to be otherwise occupied. You killed him, didn't you? You murdered the king! That is a vile accusation, and I should have you locked up on charges of slander. The late king, Pastoria, and I were good friends. I was such a comfort to him in his final days, nursing him as his health ebbed away. Please don't talk to me any further on this. The pain is too much. You lying charlatan. I'll roast you into the middle of the next life! Uh Uh-uh. I'm the great and terrible Wizard of Oz, you know. You don't want to get on my bad side, do you? The Guardians have agreed. In the absence of an heir... Ozma is the heir! In the absence of an heir, I am to be appointed the interim ruler of the Emerald City. Until some constitutional fine-tuning can be passed, the Lurleen family tree traced out a, a more legitimate member of the royal family found. In the meantime, someone with the right initials will prove a wonderful placeholder. Placeholder? Where is Ozma? I'm sure I don't know what you mean. I bet you don't. What have you done with the princess? Me? I've done nothing. The poor girl has vanished. You're fooling nobody, wizard! On the contrary, my dear. I'm fooling everybody. Now listen to me and you listen good. The Guardians have chosen to support me now. Not you. Not Galinda. Not Lacasta. Not the other one. Me. And flying in here, cackling and ranting, will get you nowhere. Where is Ozma? Ozma is gone. And that's all you need to know. There is now only me to rule Oz. And you better get used to that. I'll find her, you know. From this point on, I am dedicating my life to finding the lost princess. And I will end you. I guarantee it. Ooh, a vendetta. <laughs> oh, I love it. You know, you Aussians are all so theatrical. This is not a game, wizard. It's always a game, and one that you have lost. By all means, try to seek out the princess if you like. You'll never find her. She's dead then. Well, that would be telling. By Lurleen's bones, I promise. Oh, I'm growing tired of these empty threats in my own throne room. If you're going to nurture your hatred of me, then you can do so elsewhere. I hereby order your return to your own realm. What? You heard me. I'm banishing you to Winkyland until further noticed. You are forbidden to set foot in the Emerald City ever again. (laughs) I don't think you'll be missed. No one mourns the wicked. You don't want to make an enemy of me, wizard. And you don't want to make an enemy of the Wizard of Oz. You have no power here, witch. Be gone before someone... (laughs) 
No. You're not even worth a parting shot. Mark my words. You've not seen the last of me. I will find Ozma. I will return her to the throne. And then you, a oh wonderful Wizard of Oz, <laughs> will regret the day you cross the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Over Adventure Productions presents The Chronicles of Oz. Land of Oz, Episode 1. Sometimes you just don't want your world to change. Not in an instant, not in a moment, a day, a, a year, not ever, well, not at all. I mean, is there anything wrong with just, with just wanting things to stay the way they are? And where other people might talk about finding new places, doing new things, becoming new people or whatever. Everything you know blown away in a gust of wind. No. No, that's not for me. Look, I don't want anything to change. Look, I want everything to stay exactly the same. Look, my world isn't perfect. Sometimes it's pretty darn awful, but... But it's mine. Look, and I want to keep it that way. Because in my world, I know who I am. I'm Tipitarius, apprentice to the Witch Mombi. Indentured to her service until... Well, Lily knows forever, probably. Which is fine. Like I said, I don't want, I don't want things to change. Oh, oh and... And everyone calls me Tip. Tip! Tip! Where the hell are you now, boy? Just like that. Mombi's an, an interesting person. And not as bad as you might think when you first see her. I, I know in the past she's... Look, you can't blame her, right? How would you feel if you used to be the Wicked Witch of the North and some little old woman kicked you out and forbade you from casting spells? Hm? You'd be a little pissed off, yeah? You know how they say power corrupts? Well, imagine you'd had that power and had it stripped away and given to some lady with a bubble fixation. Tip! I'm giving you ten seconds to show yourself. Then I'm coming looking! One! Two! You'd go a bit mad, really, wouldn't you? Maybe a little crazy? And maybe you'd do things that you don't mean. And if you just understood where she was coming from, you... Seven! Eight! Nine! Yeah, oh, you skipped a few numbers! Did I? Where have you been? In here, just labelling potions. Come when I call you. Yes, Mombi. What are you labelling? Just the anti-geomantics. I saw the old ones were faded and, and I don't want you saying, oh, I need a potion to stop people finding me. But I can't read which anti-geomantic yeah, I Yeah, I stopped listening to you some time back. I've got to go out for a while. Cool. A few days. Uh. I'm leaving you in charge while I'm gone. Really? Wow, I'm so honoured. Shut up. In charge of... All the other people in the house. Enough. I sure hope the power of all this authority doesn't go to my head while you're away. Because, I mean, wow. Don't you ever worry that one day you'll push me too far. Where are you going? Mind your business. You're seeing the magician again, aren't you? You're getting too clever for your own good, Tiptarius. Didn't he see you off for good the last time you visited him? Suddenly, I feel like talking to you isn't something I want to be doing right now. He'll run you out of his cottage with fireworks again. Well, maybe I have something he wants this time. That's what you said last time. Maybe I'll offer you up to him as a trade. Ha! <laughs> You'll never get rid of me. I'm too valuable to you. With this much back chat, you want to bet? Right. Don't get into mischief while I'm gone and stay out of my spell chest. Oh, oh, Mombi! Don't forget to feed the cow. Oh, Mombi, wait. The what? It's... Well, it's the festival of Jakakai this weekend. I can read a calendar. What about it? Uh, well, I was wondering if you'd let me... Well, well, this year, I, I mean... Um, oh, not I, this again. Well, I know you don't like them, but it's, they're traditional. And we've had a lot more pumpkins in the veggie garden this season. So it's not like we're going to miss one. Oh, for Lurleen's sake. Please, Mombi. F- 
fine. You can make a pumpkin head. Oh, thank you. If it'll stop your incessant whining. Oh, this is going to be so great. For those that don't know, a pumpkin head is a traditional figure of fun built in celebration of the festival of Jakakai. It makes no sense and it's, <laughs> it's kind of stupid. But everyone does it. At this time of year, you see them everywhere. It, it, it's part of the season and it's just... Well, I don't know, it's fun. Making a pumpkin head is straightforward. First, you find the biggest, ripest pumpkin in your patch. Carve out a face, make it scary. Then put on a body made out of whatever rubbish you can find. The weirder the better. Then you dress it up in your most outrageous old clothes and, and you end up with a sort of scarecrow with a fruit as its head. Look, it, it sounds bonkers, but trust me, everyone in Oz does this once a year, just as winter begins. They stand outside your front door, their goofy grins making kids giggle as they as they protect your home against the evil Jackakai hobgoblins, the Ogwas, and the other dark spirits of winter. <laughs> Maybe that's why Mombi never wanted me to make one. Don't ask me why I wanted to do one this year. It just seemed like a good idea at the time. Something normal to keep up my spirits as winter started. Even I didn't know then how much I was going to need every inch of my spirits. General Malik of Munchkinland, you have been tried and found guilty for the following crimes against the people of Oz. The murder of over a thousand of your fellow Munchkins. The willful encouragement of civil war, refusing to accede to demands of your sovereign king, and willfully continuing to promote the ideals of a declared dictator. Before sentence can be passed, you have been brought to the palace of the Emerald City for final judgment. You are in the presence of Locasta, Good Witch of the North, and His Majesty the Scarecrow, King of Oz. Have you any final words to say in your defence? What I did, I did in the name of those who oppose the Witch of the East, for the honour and the glory of the Munchkin people, and I will not be judged by any pretend king. You're not a king! You're not even a man, you're made of straw! Is that all? Yes. Then, with your permission, Majesty... Do it. General Malik... By order of His Majesty the Scarecrow, with the consent of the Witch of the North acting in proxy for the remaining Ozian powers, by the laws of the land of Oz, and in the name of Lurleen herself, you have been sentenced to execution. This sentence will now be carried out. Storkguard, do your duty. This isn't the end, you know. The, the Munchkins will not tolerate another Emerald City dictatorship. They wouldn't under the wizard and they won't under you. There will be consequences. The Munchkins will... General Malik of Munchkinland is dead. Let us hope this brings an end to the Munchkin War at last. Your Majesty, where is he going? Your Majesty! Oh, it's all right. I'll speak with him. Your Majesty. I couldn't stay out there, Lacasta. I understand. It's quite a distressing business for everyone. Everyone? You're just the Witch of the North. You didn't have to order the death of... of... I'm sorry. You had no choice, Scarecrow. It's regrettable, but he had to die. Did he? With General Malik dead, the Munchkin Civil War can finally come to an end. He was the last of the generals. The only one perpetrating the conflict. Without him... His supporters will all dissipate. We can have peace again, so everyone tells me. It's just... It's not easy, I know. There had to be another way. There wasn't. If there was, I would have found it for you. As you know, I spent quite a lot of time in Munchkinland after the witch died, working towards peace. I wouldn't have recommended this course of action if it wasn't the only way. I've got this wonderful brain. I should have been able to think of another way. If you had let him live, the Munchkins would have continued to kill each other over his leadership. You did a good thing, Scarecrow. I want to go there. To Munchkinland? Yes. 
I need to see for myself that it's all better now. Well, I wouldn't say it's all better. There's still quite a lot to be done. I'm returning there myself today to help with the restoration and repair. Then I should be there. I'm the king, aren't I? Shouldn't a king be among his people? You are. In the Emerald City. You have people here too, you know. And they need their leader. Yes, but... No, no, I need to go to Munchkinland. Uh, thank you, Lacaster. I, I feel much better now. But I need to speak with my guardians. Good luck, Scarecrow. I hope you find your way. Welcome back, listeners. For those of you just tuning in, we've just heard the execution of General Malik, the leader of the Munchkin Civil War, and the one who has, arguably, been keeping the conflict going for so long. In the studio with me now, we have Mr. H.M. Wogelberg, T.E., who has been taking a significant interest in the Munchkin War since it started six months ago. Mr. Wogelberg, welcome. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, Prina. Uh, and as you are aware, I myself have spent quite a bit of time with the Munchkins these past months. Uh, so I feel life perfectly placed to give a unique perspective on the predicament. So talk us through the events of today. Does this finally mean an end to the Munchkin conflict? Mm, oh, well, we can only hope so. I don't think it's an understatement to say that the Munchkin situation is a complex one. For decades they've been living under the continuous rule of the Witch of the East, who, for all of her faults, did have her supporters as well as her detractors. And following her assassination six months ago, her people have been directionless leaderless, with many individuals both within the Witches' collapsed government and from the rebel forces trying to take control. Of which Malik was the most powerful. Oh, he definitely emerged as the leader with the greatest influence. As time went on and other potential leaders were killed or removed, but he was by no means entirely popular. And unfortunately, while he remained in power, there was no other way for the conflict to end. So you believe the Emerald City was right to intervene? I believe something needed to be done, yes. Otherwise, the conflict would have continued indefinitely. Or until the Munchkins were wiped out entirely. Indeed. And we've all seen the images circulating of the Stork Guard army King Scarecrow ordered to invade Munchkinland a month ago. Oh, don't, don't get me wrong, Prina. Uh, it's regrettable that such action had to be taken. I was among those who hoped against hope that uh, with the passage of time, such things could have been resolved in their own and natural leader could have emerged that would calm the violence. But clearly this was not going to happen, and lives were being lost. There are some who have objected to the Emerald City intervening in a Munchkin affair. Do they have a point? Perhaps they do. I couldn't possibly comment. Uh, but as I said, I did spend some time in Munchkin land with some of the new Munchkin leaders, including Malik, and I can honestly say... There could be no end to the fighting whilst they were in command. Which brings me back to my original question. Does the execution of General Malik mean peace for Munchkinland? It's hard to say. I mean, yes, the head of the beast has been cut off, and <laughs> if you'll excuse the pun, <laughs> uh, but it will be some time before normality will return to the East. And Malik, like the witch herself, still has followers who I can't imagine will take this lightly. You know, what Munchkin land really needs now is a new leader to unite them. And who do you recommend for this position? Uh, well, what are your career plans, Prina? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, it's hard to answer that one, I'm afraid. But, but perhaps Glinda the Good could choose someone for the role. After all, she's pretty much established a precedent. Hmm. It's a good idea, Ferriment. It's a terrible idea, and you know it. Look, it sends all the right messages. A united Oz under one king. We support the Munchkins on the road to restoration. And so on. He'll be killed. We'll be in anarchy, and I'm saying no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there is not much that can kill him. He was ripped apart by the wind monkeys, remember? And he just walked away from that. Are you going to risk it? Are you going to be the one to tell him no? Well, I... Oh, wait, I... let me show you how it will go. You'll be all... Oh, your majesty, you can't possibly go to the, um, uh, uh. And he'll be all like, yes, Faramond, go on, what is it? And you'll be, oh, well, sire, uh, but the matter is, when it's all 
Said and done. Stutter, stutter, fumble, stutter. That's well out of line, Jeliah. And a terrible accent. Tell me I'm wrong. No, better yet, tell the king that he can't visit his people in Munchkinland. Go on, I dare you. Rehearsing for the Jackakai play already, are we? Which one of you is playing a Canuck and who's playing a Ryle? Oh, Faramet's definitely a Canuck. Ombi, I've heard about the king's plans to visit the Munchkin battlefields. I, I think it's a bad idea. And I think it is the perfect opportunity to promote him as a viable leader of the Aussian people. I agree with Faramond. Oh, for once, Ombi Ambi, could you please support me and realise I actually know what I... Oh, uh, (laughs) you are supporting me. (laughs) Sorry. Don't get too comfortable with it. I'm not. Ombi? Faramond has a point, Jeliah. The king must feel like he needs to visit his people, but the situation is still far too volatile for a royal visit. I'm just going to inform his majesty now. Oh, please. Let Faramond... He's on a dare. Things were so much easier when they only let me in the throne room. Your Majesty. Hmm? Oh, oh, hi guys. Thanks for coming. I want to talk about my trip into Munchkinland. Yes, sire. About that. I was thinking we'd travel into the Munchkin city itself first. Survey the damage. That's where all the worst of the battles happen, so they tell me. And I can have a look at Dorothy's house. I always wanted to see that. I understand there's not a lot left of that now, sire. Not after six months of war. Oh, well that's disappointing. Oh, well, I'm sure there's lots of stuff we can look at. Ruins or what have you. Jillia, you can have them taking pictures of me being thoughtful. It's Jillia, sire. Oh, right, sorry. I'll get that right one day. Oh, you haven't in six months. Jillia. And then I thought we'd go out, through the towns, the farms, talking to people, hearing about their experiences. I want to ask them if they're okay now. We can travel down the Yellow Brick Road and do a survey at the same time, because I have to tell you, when we were travelling it last year, there was a lot of damage we really should look into repairing. Sire. I have to look out for the colliders, though. Your Majesty! I'm sorry, Sire, that tone was inappropriate. No, it's okay, Ombi. You wanted to say something? It's just that, well, when all's said and done, uh, when it comes down to it... Your Majesty, I'm afraid it just isn't safe enough for you to travel into Munchkinland right now. Wow. I completely thought that would go a different way. But the people need to see their king, Paramount. I know, Your Majesty, and I can see this is an important issue for you. Obviously, since you come from Munchkinland originally. It's not just that. And I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting, sire, but we've only just executed General Malik. He still has supporters out there, not to mention supporters of the Wicked Witch, who won't respond kindly to someone as... Closely associated with Dorothy as you are. But that's exactly why I need to go. To show them who I am, that I'm a good king. And that I can lead them better than any wicked old witch could. For the record, sire, I agree with you. Oh, thank you, Jellia. I'm sorry, sire, but as guardian of the gates, I'm responsible for your security and the security of your entourage. I'm afraid not all of your retinue could walk away from a winged monkey attack like you can. Well, in that case, I'll go by myself. I'll pack a basket, ease on down the road. No, sire. Protocol won't permit that. The monarch may never travel unaccompanied. Then what's the point of being king if I have to stay in my palace every day? When do I get to do some actual ruling? Your Majesty, I only ask for some patience while we... I've been patient. I've been waiting and now I want to go and... Thank you, Jelia. Farramont, can we have the room now, please? Of course. I have a brief thing to get to. I only want to see the munchkin zombie. And you will, sire. As soon as the area is secure, we'll take you to the city centre and July can take as many pictures of you as she likes. But it's important we do this properly. If you go too soon, things will escalate. I know, I know, it's just... thought this was going to be different. Thought what was, sire? This. Everything. This crown, this... I used to have adventures once. With Dorothy and the Tin Woodman, the Lion, and... No, it doesn't matter. Sire? It's fine. I'll, I'll stay put like you say. It makes sense. Even I can see that. Thank you, sire. So what do I need to do now, then? What other delightful delights have you got planned for the King of Oz today? Well, you have a meeting with the former ambassador to Ix to discuss re-establishing an embassy there. After that, you're meeting with the young competition winners from one of the local schools to judge their war crimes diorama. That can't be right. I'll confirm that for you, sire. And finally, I've got Farriman briefing you on stalk guard security. And then there's dinner. Fantastic. You never know when you've got a good thing going for you, Pipped! You and I could do wonderful things together, you know! But you're a bent-up, ridiculous, impotent little magician with no 
redeeming features whatsoever. And that goes double for your wife! At least I got this out of that little transaction. What have you got there? Just a little powder of... Glinda! It's been a long time, Momby. Powder of what? Oh, a powder for a little condition I have I'm, that I'm not comfortable talking about. A lady has to have her privacy. You're not dealing in magic, I hope. I understand the Witch of the North made the conditions of your living arrangements very clear. I'm the Witch of the... Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I'm behaving myself, I promise. This powder is purely medicinal. I'm sure. And what brings you to the doorstep of the crooked magician? Or is Glinda the good so above reproach her actions can go unquestioned? You bring me here as it happens? I was looking for you. Oh. I have to ask, isn't it dangerous travelling into Munchkinland even now? The fighting has mostly stopped and I never made it into the mountains. What do you want, Glinda? I want to ask you some questions. Then hurry up about it. It's cold. What do you want to ask me? Ozma. What? So, you know something. Ozma disappeared decades ago. What makes you think I... Oh, just a hunch. I've been doing some research, and it turns out you might have some information as to her whereabouts. Well, your research is wrong. Haven't got a clue. You're still a terrible liar, Mombi. What do you know? Nothing. Now I have to leave. Mombi? Tip's expecting me. I have to get back to him. I'm on a mission, Mombi. The truth will be found out. And if you don't help me now, you'll have to help me later. Mombi! Mombi! How can she know she can't? Nobody knew anything besides me and him. He's long gone. She's bluffing. She has to be. But even so, I can't take the risk she might know something. I need to think, I need to think and make a plan to- ah! What the hell is that tip? <laughs> Do you like it? It's hideous. It's meant to be, it's a pumpkin head. It's cluttering up my front porch. It's going to keep away the ogwas. It's going to be toothpicks. Stand back. No, no, stop, you promise. I don't give a crap, get out of the way. Mombi, please, it's the festival of Jack and Kyle. Let it live. Just until the end of the festival. Let it live, sentimental little twerp. Why would I... Let it live. Interesting. What? This could be an opportunity to test it. Keep back, boy. I'm working. Mombi, what are you doing? Just a few sprinkles over the subject, he said. There we go. Now... We are... Tiag! Here! Bombi! This is working. He's coming to life! I brought the pumpkin head to life! He lives! Holy moly, he lives! Don't yell like that! Do you think I'm deaf? He even talks! That magician isn't as crooked as he looks! Bombi, what have you done? What is that stuff? Powder of life. Powerful stuff, as you can see. You're not wrong. Holy Lurleen. You! Huh? Pumpkinhead. Yes, I'm talking to you. Don't stand there looking so surprised. I know you can hear me. I don't think he can help it. His mouth is locked that way. Sorry. Uh, Pumpkinhead, if I knew she was going to do this, I might have put a bit more effort into carving your face. Why? Is there something wrong with it? Is... is my head bigger than yours? It feels like it is. It's a pumpkin. Right. What's a pumpkin? Well, the thing's an idiot, and I've got enough of them around here as it is. Time to go back to sleep, pumpkin head. Mombi, ah! no! Get out of my way, boy. You can't kill him, not now. Yeah, don't kill me. What do you mean I can't kill him? You just watch me. It'd be cruel. Have you met me? No, he, he can help out around here. You're always saying I'm too slow getting things done. Now I have help. Yeah, I can help. I, I, I... What can I do? You, Tip, are too slow because you're a lazy twerp. That's why you're slow. Now there'll be two of you lazing around. I won't be lazy. I promise. See, Mombi, he promises. He's two minutes old. Does he even know what promises are? I'll teach him. Will you? W well, I made him, didn't I? You did? A pumpkin head isn't just for Jackakai night, you know. You mean, I can stay? Hooray! Outside. You can stay outside. I'm not having a pumpkin spoiling away in my house. Spoiling away? Is a pumpkin likely to spoil? Is that what pumpkins do? It's okay, you'll be fine out here. I'll... I'll come out and check on you later. Um... Okay. I'm getting soft in my old age, I know it. See, you really do have a heart, Mombi. Wash your mouth out and don't make me change my mind. I... 
don't even know their names. I don't even know my name. I don't know. Maybe we should have been friendlier, or at least Mombi should have. But she clearly had other things on her mind. She didn't speak at all as she unpacked. Didn't respond to my stupid jokes at all. Usually I get a basic shut up and the occasional threat to turn me into a toad if I go too far. But tonight she was quiet. She was thinking. We had dinner, which was some sort of soup thing I'd managed to cobble together for us. And then Mombi got to work. Well, she did this most nights. Early evening spell casting. Dark magic works best as the sun sets. And let's not be unclear about this. Mombi only ever works in dark magic. So she'd wait for the early evening to begin her work. And I would help her, as a dutiful apprentice should. Build the fire tip and gather the milk and vinegar, please. No, she wasn't cooking. She was spell casting. She consulted a little tiny piece of paper and called out ingredients for me to fetch. Rosewood, nettle broth, merry whistle. No, the powdered one, idiot. I need to grind it in. I think a pepper feather would also do very nicely. Actually, grab two. And this would go on. I'd bring her the things, she'd prepare them, pop them into the cauldron, stir, and then send me off for more. Sometimes she'd talk about what she was creating. It's how I'd learn about the dark arts. But, but this time she was silent. She was focused on her preparations. A pint of aconite, please. And some marble lessons. Yes, that's going to work well. It, it took me longer than it should have for me to work it out. But what she was making. What all these things do when they come together. Pepper feathers are used for transformative spells. She puts them into everything, usually. Aconite is a magical sealant to ensure that it doesn't auto-reverse. Merry Whistle helps the action timing. And Marble Essence was obvious. Someone was getting turned into stone. So, um, who's this for, Mombi? What makes you think it's for anybody? Well, you're making a potion, so... Too many questions. Get me some more water, it's boiling dry. She was avoiding the question. And that was what worried me the most. Look, Mombi wasn't the sharing sort as a rule. But if she was turning the local postman or an annoying farmer into a statue, she'd at least say so. Even if she had plans for the pumpkin head, she'd at least rub it in. There was only one reason I could think of why she wasn't telling me what she was doing. She was saving it for me. Are you getting that water or not? Ah, uh, 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 right. I'll, I'll just go get that. I, I need to... What the hell's wrong with you now? It's just... The water. There's only this bucket left. Then go get some more from the well! Right. Sure. I'll just go to the well. Give me what you've got first. I don't want to have to start over. Oh, oh, oh sure. Sure. I had to think fast. I was certain the potion was for me. She was being too evasive for it to be anything else. And right here was an opportunity to get out of there. I could go to the well, and then go past the well, and keep on going until I was far enough away from Mombi that she wouldn't be able to turn me into stone. Suddenly I had a plan, and my legs were already taking me to the door. Tip! The bucket! Right! Yeah, that'd, um, that'd help, I guess. <laughs> I was doing so badly at this. I walked over to collect the empty bucket, and, and there it was, on the bench behind Mombi. The mysterious powder of life I'd seen Mombi use that afternoon to create the pumpkin head. The most powerful spell I'd ever seen Mombi cast. I didn't really know what I was doing at this point. I saw myself reach for the bottle and slip it into my pocket. And then quietly and quickly, I made my way out of the door. Hi there! Ah! Oh. I've been waiting, just, just like you said to. Shh! No, not so loud. Sorry. Is this better? Yes. Uh, uh, no. Uh, look, I don't care. Excuse me. Where are we going? I don't know. I... Uh, um, look, you'd better come with me or she... Might do something to you too. We're going somewhere. Where, where are we going? Just away. Look, we have to get as far away from here as possible. Why? Because I don't want to be turned into something else. Winter comes early in the Gillikin Mountains, and the snow had already risen up to my knees. I moved as fast as I could away from Mombi's house, but, but it was slow going. Even slower with Pumpkinhead with me. Whoops! <laughs> 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 Uh, here we go again. Dad, can you help me up again? Please, Dad. Well, all right, I'm coming. Just hold still. I'll... What did you call me? Dad? Well, don't. How about Daddy? Uh, no. 
But you made me, didn't you? That's what you said earlier. Technically, that's true, but like... So, you're my dad then? Please don't call me that. What should I call you then? My name's Tip. Try Tip. Tip? No, you're my dad. I'm going to call you Dad. <sighs> Look, fine, whatever. Just stand up, will you? And what are you going to call me? Well, I'm going to call you all kinds of things if you don't start trying to stand up. I need a name, Dad. You can't just get calling me Pumpkinhead. Why not? Because... I don't know. What's a pumpkin head? You are. You're a pumpkin head. And um, what am I for? It's for the Jackakai Festival. Will you please just stand up? Okay, okay. You get grumpy when you're running away from a witch. There. What's a Jackakai Festival? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. What is it, Dad? It'll, it'll take too long to explain. It's okay. I can be patient. Since when? Dad! Fine! The Jackakai Fest... Jack? Look, you want a name? There it is. We'll call you Jack. Hooray! Jack Pumpkinhead. Oh. Look, suck it up and keep walking. Where are we going? I don't know. And how long will it take to get there? Cut it with the questions. I don't know. You didn't plan this out very well, did you, Dad? Oh, shut up! Look, I don't know what I'm doing. I just... Look, we just have to keep moving, okay? What? I didn't say anything. You told me to shut up, Dad. I, I, I just thought I heard a... The Emerald City. What's the Emerald City? It's a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. We'll, we'll go there. Oh, come on, Jack Pumpkinhead, we're heading south. <laughs> Easier said than done. My newfound son wasn't built for long-term travel. Had I known Mombi was going to bring him to life, I might have designed him with a, a little bit more care. I'd have used stronger sticks and reinforced his joints for one thing. Not to mention balanced him properly against his giant head. As it was, Jack kept stumbling around, his, his legs twisting the wrong way, and I was constantly stopping to repair him. And I was very aware that every time we stopped, we ran the risk that Mombi would catch up to us. Because she had to know we were missing by now. I'm sorry, Dad. It's not your fault. Maybe you need to build me more joints. I don't think we have the time. But we can't keep going like this. What if my legs wear out before we get to the Emerald City? The Emerald City. And you've got a point. Okay, let's stop here for a minute. Let's see what I can do. Oh, that tickles! Oh, stop it! Dad, where are we? How should I know? Middle of nowhere. With a bench? Yes, we're in the middle of nowhere with a bench. Hold still. Odd-looking sort of bench. You've seen many, have you? Well, no. Well, then shut up. Why is there a bench in the middle of nowhere? I don't know. It's because it's not a bench. It's a sawhorse. Right. What's a... A sawhorse is a block of wood on stumps that your woodcutters used to cut wood with. You read my mind. <sighs> this place was probably a sawmill once. A long time ago. Would it be good if this was a real horse? Sure would be. I wish it was a real horse. If wishes were horses, pumpkins would ride. Exactly. I could ride the horse to the Emerald City and you wouldn't have to keep repairing my legs. Yes. But I guess it can't because it's just made of wood. Just like you. What is it, Dad? Have you fixed my leg? No. Jack, move over for a second. Let me have a closer look at this thing. Okay. That's sturdy. The legs are thicker planks than what you're walking on, that's for sure. And if you squint, you can kind of imagine it looks like a horse. You're right. That bit up here could be its head. And the little knots there are its eyes. And the stick at the back could be a tail. You know what, Jack? What? The thing about magic is that the key ingredient is imagination. Imagining what you want to happen is half the job. Move out of the way. Why? What are you doing? I knew I stole this for a reason. What's this? Powder of life. It's what Mombi used to bring you to life. And now I'm going to do the same thing to this sawhorse. This is so exciting. But can you do it? Jack, I've been a witch's apprentice for as long as I can remember. I think I know a thing or two about casting a transformation spell. Stand back. Is it working? Uh, I've got to get as much of it covered with the powder as I can manage. There we go. And now... Yeah, now? Now we do the spell. <clears throat> Hope I remember it right. <clears throat> we are... What does that mean, Dad? I don't know. Shh. Tiag. What's that? It means shut up. Tiag!
really are a clever sorcerer, Dad. Now we can really get moving. I didn't think much at the time how easy it was to cast a spell. I was only an apprentice. I knew lots of theory, but I can't do any actual magic. I suppose that was you. Helping me bring the sawhorse to life that night? <laughs> you could say I had something to do with it. I figured. It was becoming obvious that you weren't getting very far. And I needed you in the Emerald City. The idea was yours, though. Do you regret that I stepped in? To create the sawhorse? No, you were right. And he's been a loyal steed. There's plenty more I regret since then. Then continue your story, Tip. Right. Well, um, just as Jack and I were about to get moving, things were moving elsewhere in Oz as well. In Munchkinland, General Malik's followers were learning of the day's events in the Emerald City. Dead? I'm sorry for your loss, Colonel. Save your pity, Lieutenant. Give me your report. Are you sure you want to know? I want to know how the Scarecrow killed my father. Beheading. So the reports say. They tried him and judgment was found to... That's ridiculous. Tried under what authority? A straw man king with no more right to sit in that throne than the wizard before him? What right has he to sign my father's death warrant? Ma'am, I... My father is... was a descendant of Lurleen herself, like the old king Pistoria. He had more right to the Emerald City than any stuff... Gather the troops, Victor. We march tonight. Uh, Colonel. No, not Colonel. With my father's death, I am now the highest ranking member in the Munchkin army, and I am therefore promoted. And my orders are that we march on the Emerald City. Let them know that the Munchkins are under the command of General Ginger, and we will not tolerate any further interference from the so called King of Oz. Right away, ma'am. And the Scarecrow will learn to suffer for what he's done to my family. And once he is gone, we will finally make Oz marvellous! Marvelous Land of Oz, written and directed by Aaron Toman, based on the book by L. Frank Baum. Starring Matt Phillips as Tip, Mark Porter as Jack Pumpkinhead, Aaron Toman as Scarecrow, John Jennings as The Wogglebug, and Kirsten Page, with Rob Lloyd as The Wizard of Oz, Elise D'Amico as The Wicked Witch of the West, Lauren Tice as Mombi, Brett Underwood as Faramant, Gareth Severn as General Malik, Jennifer Ali as Lacasta, Tegan Harris as Prina, Michelle Drinnen as Jelia Jan. David Nagel as Ombi Ambi, Wendy Robertson as Glinda, Jenya Mick as Ginger, and Lucas Thomas as Victor. Other roles played by members of the cast. Australian sound recording by Daniel Burnett. Sound designed by David Nagel and Aaron Toman. Music by Tony Diana. Crossover Adventure Production. Thanks so much to Aaron Toman and Godspeed to completing the rest of the series. Although, surely, Jack, in Canada, don't you call it the land of 28.3 grams? <laughs> it's pretty much, yes. <laughs> Please go back and check out their entire first season of ChroniclesofOz.com. And be sure to go back and check the entire history of the Sonic Society, 700 and nearly 50 episodes chronicling the rise of the modern audio drama movement. Interviews, reviews, recreations of old-time radio an analysis of new and old. And be sure to check in this third Thursday now of the month 
as the Amigos plus a special guest, Miss Tonya Malievich, look at one of the shining jewels of Canadian audio history. Nightfall. And we'll see you next Tuesday, of course, when we somewhat shamefacedly present to you a thrilling space detecting series that we had missed out on for so many years now. A show that's had life not just on the internet, but through radio as well. Mm. Well, please send us your thoughts. We do love to hear from you, and we will attempt to make more time to read your feedback on the show. You can email us at sonicsociety at gmail.com or send us a message through the Sonic Society Facebook group or on Twitter at Sonic Society or at Astro Tour 2010. Jack, do we ever did 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 Huey and did Zug Bude ever get uh, put out to pasture? Yes, I'm afraid they're in the range of Sonic Society down in the farm area, enjoying their final salad years. Or no, it's not salad years. Uh. Salad years are, are young days. <laughs> what do you call them? Like the toothless years? <laughs> the twilight years, maybe. <laughs> the twilight years. That's a sweeter way of putting it. The twilight years. That's right. <laughs> but until next week, when we'll be winging your way. That's a hint. I smell a hint. Well, you should. You wrote it. <laughs> That's a good point. Yes, until then, I'm David Alt. <laughs> and I'm Jack Ward. Thank you for joining us, and good night. Good night. Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. I still think radio is probably the greatest entertainment medium ever invented. It made the audience work. Instead of a big, ugly glass picture tube, you saw the performers in your own mind. We were a family. It was a nucleus of people that you never grew away from. When I arrived, all of the WTIC people had started mm -hmm. and were working in New York and introduced me to different people and got me at least into some of the auditions. I think there is something so special between the listener and the other side of the microphone in the studio. Breaking Walls is the podcast on the history of American radio broadcasting focusing on moments, shows, and people from the golden age of radio. Subscribe to Breaking Walls everywhere you get your podcasts and at thewallbreakers.com. Chauncey Haworth, Mark Slade, and Lothar Tuppen. The demented minds behind the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour bring you... Twisted Pulp Magazine. A journey beyond surreality to worlds you never knew or hoped existed. Worlds of the supernatural. Worlds of dark satire. Worlds of nightmarish futures. Twisted Pulp Magazine. If you thought the 21st century was weird enough already, think again. Twisted Pulp Magazine. A step beyond your grandfather's pulp. Available at digitalvaudeville.com. That's D I G I T A L V A U D E V I L L E dot com. Mm -hmm.